And as I began to pray a few months back about what God would have me to speak about on this uh, occasion of the next friend in the heavens, the word, a word just kept popping in my, my heart, my spirit, and it was that of surrender. Surrender. And tonight I'm going to bring a message just entitled Out of Order. As the world is spiraling into chaos, as we see demonic influences rising in this nation and across the world, what our world needs to see is Christians who are functioning on all cylinders. But sadly, many of us, we are out of order. Have you ever uh, had to use a facility and you, you've been holding it for a long time? We just drove across the country. <laughs> we went on vacation for a few weeks to Atlanta, Georgia, and we drove with five kids in a car. Oh my goodness. But they, they did really well. God gave grace. But you know, there were times on that journey where the kids started yelling, you know, I gotta go. And there was times when we pulled up to a truck stop in the middle of the night and the sign on the, back, the restroom door said, out of order. <laughs> and it was just a, you know, a terrible thing to see. We had to get back in the car and rush and try to find the, the closest facility. And I'm afraid that when the world is seeing all play out, I think they are aware that something supernatural is going on. And yet Christians aren't rising up to the task of being salt and light in these times. And what, the, what a scared world needs to see is Christians on fire for God, fearless Christians. They need to see a difference in us. And I was talking, and I want to give a shout out to Tim for giving me the title of this message because we were talking about it. You know, just in, in the last few months, we just, we just hear of so much going on within marriages, within families, within, uh, you know, different people who are in ministry and just how it seems to be that they're falling apart. And, and uh, you know, my heart as a pastor, I know Pastor Shane could agree, is it just grieves our spirit. And I said something to him. I mean, if we would just get in line with the Holy Spirit, if we would just surrender to God in our lives, then we would see the, the fullness of his spirit. We, we would be able to fight these seemingly... Uh, battles that we should easily be able to win. And I just kept sensing that God wanted me to speak about for us at Westside and those watching too, the need for us to get it back in order. And that starts with surrender. The text that kept coming into my heart was in James chapter four. The context here in James chapter four is a carnal church. They were a carnal people. And James, the pastor there, is not holding back when he speaks to them about where, what their condition is spiritually. He said about them that they were contentious people. There was fighting among them, arguments. There was disputes and among Christians. He said they were, they were contentious people. He said they were covetous people. They were people who were more caught up in obtaining things and, and having the newer uh, car or the bigger house. They were all caught up in, in, in covetousness. They were lustful people. They were filled with lust and they had these strong burning desires for things that uh, necessarily aren't bad, but in the wrong place, they become idols and they were unfulfilled. Have you ever experienced this? I, God reminded me this month on vacation that things will never fulfill. I had the opportunity to drive a Lamborghini. And uh, yeah, and I got it, I barely, I had to fold my legs backwards, Pastor, to fit in there. I had to kind of mm, sit down and brand new Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. I mean, $250,000 car. I mean, got on it and I almost lost it, just so much power and the sound of it, and spit flames out the exhaust, and <laughs> something, you know? And um, but let me tell you, 
even driving that, being around wealth, being around affluence, being in that environment, it, there is no more joy there than there is in some homes that I've been in that there's poverty, but God is the center of it. These people have bought the devil's lie. They were covetous. They were trying to be like, they were trying to keep up with the Joneses in the church. Anybody understand what I'm saying tonight? And their lusts were unfulfilled. They were friends of the world. And by default, when we align ourselves with this world, you know, we become enemies of God. You can't love this world and love God fully. You, you can't serve two masters. Either you love the one and hate the other. And so as a result of their carnality, I want you to understand carnality in my life and in your life, it kills fellowship with the Holy One. As a result of their carnality, God was resisting these people. You know what that word resist, I learned this today. That what, what the picture there is, is that God arrayed himself in battle garments against these people. <sighs> Not a place you want to be. And he was resisting these rebellious people. I was reminded that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And then oftentimes we are out of order as believers because we're living in rebellion in some area in our lives. Whether it's from diet to dating, sugar or sexuality, caffeine or crystal meth, entertainment, uh, money matters or, or, or movies we watch. Sometimes we are in rebellion to God. We know it's wicked. We know it's wrong. And yet we continue in it. And then we wonder why we have no peace. No joy. God just kept whispering to me, surrender everything that God has done in my life and in your life. It begins with submission to him. And this is what James says to them. He says to these people, therefore, submit to God. Submit to God. Isn't he a good God? So if we know this to be true, why wouldn't we submit to him in all areas? He made us. He, he's given us life. He saved us. If you're saved in here tonight and he has uh, your best interest at heart and he wants to see you end well. He see God sees 10 years from now. Oh, if I could tell you just stories just the last few years we, you know having these written the heavens there were people who once testified up here how God w had done a mighty work in their life but they held on to one area maybe it was the, the drink after work maybe it was a cigarette I, I don't know but eventually that kink in the armor led them to be obsolete. They led them to be out of order, led them to be out of the will of God, out of church. Uh, I'm telling you, I could tell you story after story. So this matter of surrender is an is a important issue. We must submit to God. We must submit to God because it is the only way that we would be capable to defeat the enemy within our flesh. How many of you guys battle with the flesh every day like I do? I battle with my flesh, and some days I'm sad to say it gets the better of me. But God showed me that those compromises over a lifetime will lead you to an end that is not favorable. Even something as simple as our, our health. You know, we hear it all the time, but if we don't get disciplined and, and Give that to the Lord, then, then you'll see yourself in the hospital. You see yourself with diabetic symptoms. You see yourself dealing with things that you wouldn't have chosen. I've learned this. We'll either have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret in our lives, physically or spiritually. And what James is saying to these people is that they needed to submit to God because they were losing the battle within. They were losing to the flesh and the flesh always reaps to destruction, destruction of marriages, 
Destruction of your children, destruction of, of your ministry, destruction is in the wake of the flesh. And I want you guys to take this seriously tonight because we can go on and we could continue going through the emotions and you could leave here and go right back to that very vice that you have not surrendered to God and it will destroy you. I remember when God began to get a hold of my life, and I've shared this with you guys before, but I remember one of the first things he told me to get rid of, not a preacher, not anybody, but he told me, I'm sure, was to get rid of that, the rap music I was listening to. Let me tell you, I used to pull into the church parking lot with my subwoofers going, <laughs> listening to the, <laughs> the latest rap song, and then I'd go in, and then I would, I, my heart would be dull to the things of the Spirit. I couldn't hear the Holy Spirit. And I remember when he told me to grab all those hundreds of CDs and to take them and to throw them in a the trash can. He didn't tell me to sell them. He didn't tell me to give them to my friends. He told me to throw them away. And I knew that was God because it was not me. I didn't want to do it. But when I did it, I promise you, when I'd go to church, when I'd read my Bible now, it was like there was an amplifier <laughs> of God's word, his voice, and, and a desire for him. And he began to change me from the inside out. And I want to tell us, what is it tonight that we need to surrender? What is it that is keeping us from taking the next step with God? It could be uh, that, that, that pornography addiction. It could be that, that one uh, movie series you keep watching. It could be just something that seemingly uh, meaningless, but I'm telling you, that will hinder the Spirit's work in your life. We want to get serious with the Lord, don't we? We want to see Him move in our lives. Every few years, I read a little booklet entitled, Why God Used D.L. Moody. And it's always convicting. The very first reason that R.A. Torrey wrote about in this booklet about why God used him in a mighty way was because he was fully surrendered to God. D.L. Moody had heard a friend of his say, the world had yet to see or remain to see what God would do with a man who gives himself fully to him. And D.L. Moody said to himself, I will be that man. And he went on to shake two continents for Jesus Christ. His ministry still speaks today. And if we expect for God to use our lives, for God to move in our lives, we have got to understand that the more we are surrendered to him, the more his spirit can fill us. The more that we surrender our lives for his use, the more he will use us. And I don't know about you guys tonight, but I want God to use me in these last days, in these crazy times when the world has lost their mind. I want them to use me in my own four walls at my home. I want my kids to see a difference in me. I want my marriage to reflect the fact that God has all of me. And he's reminding us, I believe, during this week, because this is a theme that we've heard consistently, that we must submit to God Whatever you're holding on to, it is not worth what you are forfeiting. I promise you. In D.L. Moody's day, there were tens of thousands of other servants of God, good men and women who were, were yielded to God to some extent. But they did not see the anointing that D.L. experienced. And it was because of there was an area in their lives they were not surrendered. Let me ask you this question. Are you fully surrendered tonight? What is it that God could ask you tonight that you wouldn't be willing to do? That you wouldn't be able to give up? Are you fully surrendered to him? And if you aren't sure, ask God. I, I prayed it today. Lord, search my heart. Because I don't know it, God. Show me if there's any wicked way. Show me what I'm holding on to, Jesus. I want you more than I want that. Like we sang a moment ago and nothing else. I mean, in church, sometimes we sing these songs, but we're lying. Let's be honest. Sometimes we sing, I surrender all. 
and we're not telling God the truth and he sees our hearts. I'm almost done. If we're out of order, it could be because we are not surrendered. I believe that God wants to pour out his power and presence on our lives more than we can imagine. But we must provide that sacrifice. And that brings us to my next point. Sacrifice. You see, all throughout Christian history, we see God always required a sacrifice. He always required a cost. There always was a cost to following God. Abraham left everything to follow God. And I want you to get this picture in the church today. This concept of sacrificing for God is, is foreign to us. We don't really believe that we need to give up things or limit our liberty or whatever it might be for his uh, glory, for him to use us, for him to have his way with us. On Monday, when we got back, I got a call to visit uh, church family's mother in the hospital. And... Um, her body's filled with cancer. The doctors said there's no more that we can do for you. And as I got in the hospital room, they were listening to the worship from West Side. It was going. And I got in the room and I, I got to talk to her through her daughter, Stephanie, who goes here. and She translated for us. And let me tell you, this little woman... She said, I'm, I'm asking, I'm okay with whatever God wants to do with me. If he's done with me, if he's calling me home, I'm fine. But I'm, I'm also praying for him to heal me so that I can go and share the gospel with some more people. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. I needed that visit more than she needed me to be there. What would you be saying on your deathbed? She just wanted to serve Jesus a little longer. She just wanted to tell another soul about the Savior. That's her heart's desire. I want to ask you this. Is, you, is it your heart's desire to glorify Jesus with your life? Romans 12, 1. This is the verse that kept coming to my heart. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So Paul is getting ready to entreat the people. He's begging them. This is strong language. When he says beseech, he's saying, I beg you, brothers, because of the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Let me ask you tonight, or have we submitted to God and surrendered to God and offered ourselves as living sacrifices? This is something that we must do on a daily basis. Paul put it this way, I die daily. He had to die to self every single day. How many of you guys are like me? You have to die to self several dozen times within a day. But let me tell you, Paul said, it's by the grace of God that I am what I am. He was able to uh, labor more than anyone else. He was able to accomplish more for the kingdom than anyone else. And it was directly related to his surrender and his sacrifice for God. Because God can fill that person with his spirit. David Livingston, one of my favorite missionaries, I've, I've read about his life. And he walked over 29,000 miles in Africa. He buried his wife in Africa his first wife, and he faced opposition from his own brothers and sisters in Christ from Scotland, and, but he continued to press forward in what God had called him to do. And he said, send me anywhere, only go with me. Lay any burden on me, only sustain me. Sever any ties, but the tie that binds me to your service and to your heart. I was reminded today of a friend of mine. I met him a few years back, his name's Stephen Troell. He was killed last year in Baghdad, Iraq, as a missionary. His family watched as his life was taken. Oh, the reception he received in heaven. Just like Stephen, remember when he was stoned? And he looked up and he saw Jesus standing. This is, Jesus was giving him a standing ovation. 
I want you to understand one day you will stand before him. And may your life be lived for that day. May sacrifice be equal to what was given for our salvation. Do you know, not know, family, we've been bought with the price. The blood, the precious blood of Jesus. So anything he may call us to do, may we say, Lord, here I am. Lord, your servant hears you. And I'm telling you, there is where you'll find fulfillment, not in the Lamborghini, not in the house. Hey, I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. It's difficult. But I'm telling us, and I always say this because it's something you, we need to hear. It is worth it. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. When you see him. <laughs> I always talk about, I don't want to get to heaven empty handed. I don't want to get to heaven alone. I'm thankful there are souls already ahead of me that God used me to lead to him. But I'm not content. Oh, I'm never going to retire by God's grace. I want to be like that lady on her hospital bed trying to win my nurses to Christ. And I want you guys to have that burning desire too tonight. It starts with surrender. Surrender it tonight. Come to the altar, whatever it is. Any addiction, any... Anything, surrender it all. Surrender your plans. Your life is not your own. I was listening to a worship song today. I give myself away. It says, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself away. And I had that on repeat. Because that's what he is worthy of. Isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy?